Do you have any questions today? You'll be able to fill out a short survey. We ask that you take a few moments to fill that out for us. It is helpful. Additionally, all registrants. Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the confusion on the uh, the access code. Um, we will just be taking those questions through the uh, through the questions panel, like Ashley said. So, as you uh, as we get into that, if you'll uh, ask your questions there, we'll try and get those answered, and we'll take a look at the uh, at the end and and uh, see what's left, and and try and get everyone's questions answered. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, Inventor 2020 and the uh, the weldment tools. Um, if you have an earlier earlier release of Inventor, the the tools did not change for the 2020 release. Um, so so everything that you'll see today will uh, will definitely work. Um, I am going to subject you guys to a uh, to a PowerPoint here for for a few slides, and then we'll uh, we'll actually get into a uh, a live demo. Um, so. Um, just kind of an overview of the uh, the Weldman environment. Um, some options for selecting selecting Weldments or creating Weldments. Um, you really have two choices. You can start with the uh, the Weldman assembly, or you can convert an existing assembly to a uh, to a Weldment. And when you do that, either way, you'll pre be presented with the uh, with the Weld panel and the Weld tools. Um, I will say that this conversion or even the creation is a one-way street. Once you have a weldment, it's always a weldment. There's, uh, there's no way to bring it back to that, uh, that standard assembly. Um, as we get into this, we may be deciding what, um, what weld materials we're going to have. If you're going to do some kind of um, FEA analysis, or if you're um, if you're making a, a note on your drawings regarding the weld materials, um, there are four types that are out of the box, and and uh, certainly you can add your own weld materials. You want to add your own appearance um, bitmap, if you will. Um, but these four you can see here listed: aluminum. Um, we've got brass, stainless steel, and mild steel. And, um, and we'll take a look at those and, and how to change those as we get into the live demo side. Um, as I already said, once you, uh, once you start a weldment or convert to a weldment, you are presented with a weld tab that we can kind of see here on the bottom. And we've got access to the welding tools as well as um, the bead report and the, the weld calculator. And we'll, uh, we'll look at those here just a little bit. That bead report, um, basically is a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet that gives you information about the individual beads, um, their physical properties, material size, so on and so forth, um, that you can pull out and, and, uh, and provide to those that, uh, that need that type of information. You can also run your, um, your weld calculator here to determine um, if, the, uh, if the intended weld is going to be strong enough for for the load you're going to put on it um, to uh, to look at the size that you want to do and ma and maybe even alter your size and and run what if scenarios. As we get uh, as we get started with weldments, um, there is really um, not much difference at the beginning with welds. Um, you're going to go ahead and place your components and you're going to uh, constrain those components in the same manner as you would any standard assembly. You're going to use those standard, uh, standard or common practices for creating the assembly itself. Once that part's done, then you'll move to um, the weld tab and you'll begin to work with, uh, with some of those welding tools. And typically, we would start out with uh, with preparations if needed. If we need to add a chamfer or a hole to uh, to a given component, um, we can add those right from the assembly, right from the uh, the weld environment. And we'll see how those are added here in just a little bit. Um, these are we can think about these as assembly features. If you've uh, if you've ever created a feature in the context of an assembly. You know that you're uh, you're removing material, um, you're taking things away. 
Um, it's the same kind of concept, and we'll we'll see that happen here in just a little bit. And then we get into the welds themselves. We have uh, we have a few different types: uh, fillet welds, groove welds, and then the uh, the cosmetic welds. And we'll see a, a node in our browser where these welds will appear as uh, as individual components or, or separate pieces, if you will. Um, they do have specific materials, um, as we've already talked about, so we can uh, we can look at those and change that material if need be. Um, and then the the final step with welds would be to uh, to add any kind of machining operations threaded hole slot, something that um, that you would want to add after a component has been, or an, after an assembly has been welded, um, to avoid any kind of um, any kind of change or, or um, deterioration in those uh, in those machining uh, steps that might be provided by uh, by the heat of the weld process itself. Um, taking a look here at the um, at the field or the the fillet weld tools, um, we have some options where we can select multiple faces, and again, we'll see that during our uh, during our demo. Um, we can uh, we can select for option one or option two multiple faces. Um, we determine the size of our weld, and if we do just a single input that you see, um, kind of right here at the uh, the 10 millimeter input there. Then that's going to assume that that uh, that weld is equal in height and width. We can chain around around um, tangent direction or tangent uh, edges, and we can set the direction of that weld. What what way are we going to uh, pull that weld from? Um, we can determine our contour whether it's flat, convex, or concave. And then if we have convex or concave, how deep is that offset? How deep does it go in or, or expand out? Uh, we can set intermittency for uh, for stitch welds, um, setting the bead length and the center to center distance. You can see there in the the middle, and then determine even the the extent of the weld. So as we select our uh, our faces and edges for that weld, do we want to uh, go that full length? Do we want to go from different faces, or do we want to just have a start and then um, and then a given length for that weld, as well as setting the uh, offset from end to end, we have that ability. And with each of these welds, we'll see that we have the ability to create a weld symbol within our model. Um, sometimes these symbols can clutter up the model. There is a way to turn these off, much like we can turn off the visibility of sketches and so on and so forth. Um, it might be, you know, yes, I wanna create them. You don't have to create them. They're not required um, to, uh, to show the welds themselves. Our next type of weld is the groove weld. And this basically is to, uh, to join two pieces of metal that are not um, necessarily connected together, um, that there's a, a gap in between. Um, again, we can determine if we're going to uh, chain faces, run around those tangent edges. And we also have the option with groove welds to ignore internal loops. And basically, if you think about welding a tube, do we want to ignore the ID of that tube so that um, the weld will go all the way across or do we want to include the ID of that weld or the ID of that tube so that the weld will stick to just the wall? Um, and whether that's a, a round tube, square tube, whatever, um, that's basically the concept there. Um, we do set the fill direction and depending on our, um, our face selections, um, we'll have that ability or we can, uh, we can uh, adjust that, or it is taken away if we do full face welds. Um, we can set a, a radial fill if we've got a um, cylindrical or conical um, component, and we can run that fill direction along work axes, part edges, uh, between two points. Um, obviously, we've got um, the optional radial fill, as I said, and once again, the, the creation of the weld symbol. Let's see, our next weld is the cosmetic weld. And this one's kind of interesting, we'll demonstrate this. This shows up in the model as just simply a bold line that basically says, hey, there's a weld here. Um, you get to, uh, to add that and then really, it's more about adding the, uh, the welding symbol. Um, if you don't want to clutter up, clutter up your model with, with um, 
you know, weld beads, weld images. Sometimes as, as uh, models grow in size, um, the weld images and, and the, uh, the system uh, calculating those different images for that material can cause some issues. So, so it might be um, a good option to use cosmetic welds and then you can set that symbol to be um, whatever you like. So we'll look, at, uh, we'll look at those steps as well. When it comes to uh, creating the weld symbols, um, we have a couple of different options. We can do this while we're creating the weld. Um, so we can, uh, we can make our selections. You notice here in the, uh, the top screenshot there, we can make our selections, create the welding symbol, and then choose the different sizes and, and different options for that. Um, when we do that, we have the ability to, uh, to actually link that. If you notice down at the, uh, the bottom lower, lower corner, we actually have the ability to link that to the existing weld feature. And that will pull that information that we've created at the top. Again, we'll see this here in just a minute. Um, the other option is to add the weld symbol afterwards. So if we say, you know what, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put my welds in, and then I'm going to come back and, and weld, add my weld symbols, um, we can certainly do that. And keep in mind, these are these again are not required to be in the model. We don't have to have them there. Um, they can clutter up a model, so so. Uh, just keep that in mind that um, that they're not necessary. Um, once we get to the drawing side, this is where things become very interesting. Um, we have the ability to show our model in different states, and we're going to do that through the model state tab of our drawing view box. Um, we can show the assembly view, which is just the components coming together. Um, we might pull balloons or something to that effect off that view. We can show the machining view, which adds in those machining operations that are created after we do our welds. We can obviously show the, uh, the weld view, which is gonna show the components, it's gonna show the welds, but no machining operations yet, or those preparation views. And we'll be able to pick individual components that, we have, um, that we've made preparations for. Um, and, and display those in our drawing views. So it's kind of a, a neat way to be able to show that model in, uh, in different states. So I know I moved through that, um, that pretty quickly. Uh, let's see here. It does look like we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, pull the demo here just a little bit. So I'll pull up Inventor and, and we've got a, uh, a simple model here. If you guys have taken our uh, our advanced assembly class, you may recognize this. I'm just simply using that, uh, that model. Um, and notice that I've got my, uh, my weld tab active here. Um, as, I, uh, as I come through this, notice my browser with the, uh, with the weld assembly, I'm presented with uh, presentations. I've got, uh, I've got welds here. And we'll see the different beads as we as we get in, and then obviously the uh, the machining operations as we add those, we'll see those in uh, in that context. So um, these processes are real similar to editing components. In this case, we're going to look at uh, we're going to start with the the preparation tools. So if I select that process and kind of take a look at my ribbon here. What I have access to are extrude, revolve, hole, fillet, chamfer, sweep, thread. Um, just some settings that we might need to prepare our components for a welding operation. In this case, I'm gonna use chamfer and I'm just gonna simply select this edge right here and then we'll give this a little, uh, little value and we'll go ahead and apply that. So all that did was create just a chamfer on that, uh, on that one specific component. We'll come back and look at this component here on, by itself in just a little bit. Um, with that preparation done, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the, uh, the weld tab. Now I can do that again through, uh, through jumping to the ribbon here. I can, uh, I can do that through my right click um, I can also double click here in the in the browser to get to the welds tab. And I'm gonna start with a groove weld here. I'll select my first face and I wanna do that as a full face weld. 
I'll select my second one and also as a full face. And when I do that, it takes away that full, that fill direction because it does all that calculation for me. It says, well, this is what I'm gonna do. It even fills in my, uh, my depth um, just based on the, uh, the size of that face. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply select apply on that one. And sure enough, it puts that, uh, puts that weld in there for me. I'm gonna move to a fillet weld and we're gonna do a couple of different options here. I'm gonna take my first selection and select these two horizontal plates. Um, I'll take my second selection and select my, my two vertical plates and we can see those, uh, those previews coming in play here. I'll set that size again as, as uh, half an inch. Um, just kind of take a look at that. If I wanna create that welding symbol, again, I can pull that down and what's nice about this is we have the ability to just add the current bead. So it's gonna take the numbers from my current bead. I don't have to fill that information in if I don't want to. Um, I can switch my, my arrowhead and, or, or arrow side and, and other side here if I want to. I can add in a, uh, a second symbol up here if I want to. Um, I can do things like uh, set this as a field weld if I so desire, or weld all around, I've got that symbol. Obviously, we can add our text in here. Um, we can box that text if we want to with just the check mark here. And then if we decide, you know, I wanna change my, my contour to be, um, to be a concave or convex rather um, set up, then I can come in here and say, you know what, that's gonna be convex. And I can even set my, uh, my finish symbol in here if I so desire. So those are all available. I'll go ahead and apply that so we can see what that looks like. And sure enough, there's our, uh, our weld symbol. We can drag on those just a little bit. Sometimes, let's see here, let's get out of that box. There we go. And it does have grip, so I can pull that out of the way um, to bring those in there. The next weld that I wanna do, um, also a fillet weld, is between these, uh, these plates here and the vertical plate, and I'm actually gonna do a stitch weld. So what I wanna do is pull all three of these surfaces for my, uh, my first selection. Um, my second selection will be this guy here, and we can see the, again, the preview starts for us. I'm gonna make some adjustments for, uh, for size here. We can do different size horizontal and vertical if we want to. Um, once again, we'll come back to a, uh, a flat contour. And then I'll set my uh, intermittency here, uh, say three quarters of an inch. And then let's do inch and a half spacing. And I can kind of see that preview setting in place here. I've got a little, uh, little bit of a gap. So if I want to, I can, uh, I can clear that out. And We'll set that in. I'll go ahead and apply that one so we can do those, those stitch welds. Once again, if we wanted to, I could now come back and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and add my symbol in. Um, the weld bead is gonna be this guy and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in all that information. And we'll let that, uh, we'll let that symbol just come in with us. Again, move those around, and you'll notice they do, they can clutter up that model. You can kind of see how, uh, how things go there. We do have the ability to come in. We've got our weld symbols, and I can simply uh, edit that weld symbol. I can, uh, I can turn off the visibility of that weld symbol, so that one went away. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for that one. Um, or obviously, I can bring those, uh, bring those back as I need to, um, whatever it is to, to clear that up. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add in another fillet over here. Uh, real simply, um, let's do our, uh, our second selection and let's clear out some of this information here. Let's do 12.7 again. You'll notice that even after, um, after setting all of that, it kept that information. Even after I closed that box, it kept the information. Um, that I had previously put. So that was in there. 
and I'm going to do another fillet weld uh, between these two. Now, I want to show you because I do this all the time as I'm as I'm working with different designs and and teaching classes or whatever. I will inadvertently pick two surfaces like that. It's a habit. We expect it to just automatically go to the the second selection. Um, when that happens, when you do that and you meant to pick the other one as the second selection, just simply hold down control, re-pick that face and it clears your selection for you. And then once again, you can set that in there. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use my extents as from to and pick my top surface and then this bottom surface just to fit that weld inside, uh, inside that distance there. And we'll do a groove weld to fill in our um, our previously prepared area. So I'll make my first selection. Um, I'm not going to do full face in this case. I'll do my second selection. And notice there's no preview yet. So it wants me to provide that uh, that fill direction. Now once again, I can use uh, part geometry here or I can use axes, I can use face, whatever's necessary to, uh, to add that guy in. And let's see here. I want to show the cosmetic weld. Um, once again, this will be just simply a line. I'm actually gonna do a loop and let's come down and see if we can get this edge here. And if I'm just a little bit patient, it will, will let me select a different loop and that's the one that I wanna get. Um, again, I can do from two here, I can do all, um, I can do an area. And when we do this area, this is more about mass calculations. Um, how big is this, this um, weld going to be? Um, we're not actually going to see a, a welded component like we have with these others. It will just be a line. Once again, we can add in, um, we can add in our weld symbol if we want to. Um, again, not required. We'll go ahead and select apply here. And you can see that there's just a, a simple uh, bold line running through there indicating that I've got a weld there. So our last step that, uh, that I wanna cover is actually the machining operation. And we'll go ahead and add a hole in at this point. Let's see here, we'll put it on that face. Uh, let's select our edge there at, uh, I believe it was 254. We'll find out, there we go. And same thing here. And then in this case, I'm gonna do threaded. Uh, let's change to a, uh, a metric thread here and make that considerably smaller. Let's try, uh, let's try 16, how about that? We'll do a full depth thread. You can kind of see this is, uh, if, if you've got an earlier uh, release of, of Inventor, your, your whole box looks very different. Um, one of the changes that came about, so um, got, got that to look forward to. Um, we'll go ahead and select OK there, and, and uh, you can see that we've got, uh, got the hole in here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit return to get out of these, uh, these additional feature tools. Um, once again, we can see these features added in here. Uh, we can see that we've got the chamfer and, and what that's tied to. We can see our different weld symbols. Um, and once again, our, our hole and what that's tied to. While we're here, let's go ahead and open this uh, this component, um, and we see that once again those those features that we created in the weld do not show up in the individual part itself. This might be something where we put our assembly together, and then perhaps there's a, a difference in design from from one assembly to the next. Maybe the hole's different size, or or that chamfer's included or not included. It just kind of depends on uh, on the design intent there. So the last thing that I want to do is, let's see here. Let's go back and see if we can't spin this guy around and have our, uh, have our view straight. There we go. Um, let's take a look at what these drawing views look like. We'll go ahead and, uh, and start a simple drawing. 
create a base view. Let's get that base view oriented how we want it. And we're gonna spin that guy around so we can see all of our uh, all of our welds here. There we go, that's a little better. Let's bring it this way. There we go. Um, so I'll come to the model state tab and now I need to decide what am I gonna do with this, uh, with this setup. By default, it always goes to, when we place these, it always goes to the machining view, which shows all the different operations, the preparations, the welds, um, any machining setup that we've done. Um, but I might say, you know what, I want to do just the assembly view. Let me show my components and how they go together. So I'll go ahead and create that one. And then if we want, we can simply create another base view. Um, another thing we can do is actually come over and, uh, and copy that view and then just come back and paste it and edit the view. So we'll go ahead and edit this guy, go back to that model state tab and let's do just the weld view. So now we have the preparations, we have, um, we have the welds, but we have no machining. Um, notice in our, our first view, there's no preparations. So we'll go ahead and select okay here. And I'm just gonna add in a new sheet and once again, I could do a, uh, a paste if I wanted to. And let's change this view to, uh, to be the, that final or overall machining view. So that shows all the different operations in there. And I'll do one more base view. Again, I could do a, um, I could do a copy and paste if I wanted to. Um, in this case, I'll do, uh, I'll do it through just the base view. I want to select my preparation and now I get to determine what component do I want to, uh, do I want to detail out? I happen to know that it was on that, uh, that support there. So we'll go ahead and, and spin that guy around. Sure enough, it shows the, uh, it shows the chamfer, but notice there's no hole here because that hole is done after the weld operations. Um, we do have the ability to come into our annotate tab and do some things. Let's go back to our first sheet here just a minute. Do some things like, um, like adding weld symbols in. Um, we have some, uh, some weld symbol options here. You can pull that off and it's the same kind of box. Um, we'll see the different setup. Notice that, um, that it does not tie to the material. This is, uh, this is much like adding your general dimensions where you fill out the information um, versus pulling, pulling model dimensions in. So we can see that. We can come back if we wanted to. Um, it did actually grab that. I didn't put anything in it and it actually grabbed that. Uh, let me delete that just a minute. If I wanted to, I do have the ability to, uh, to get my, uh, my weld symbols and my weld annotations. So I can bring those in. You can see where those, uh, those come out. Um, if we want to adjust those locations, obviously we can drag those and, and set those where we need to adjust our uh, arrowhead locations. And if we've got one that we need to, um, let's see, Oop, it didn't like me doing that. There we go. If we need to go ahead and edit that um, that weld symbol, we can uh, we can do so um, either through through editing the model um, in these case in this case because it's pulled in, or we can add our own. We also have caterpillar and end fill here. Um, if you want to, and I've I've done this on my drawings as well. Um, instead of actually modeling welds like we've got here. You can place your assembly in, you can add welding symbols in here. You can come in and, and add your Caterpillar in. Um, we can set that size, we can, uh, we can set its location. Let's do um, 12.7 here for overall size. Um, we've got our arc here, we've got our spacing. We can do something to that effect here. Um, Oh, and we don't want inches, we want millimeters. How about that? There we go, make that a little better. And you can see the spacing that's in there. We can do, uh, we can do stitches if we want to. Um, we have that ability. So all kinds of different things that we can add in 
with regard to uh, to our drawings. So that is uh, that is essentially our demo. Uh, let's see, Bon, are you uh, are you able to unmute yourself as we look at these questions here? Um, I don't see any questions in a question box here. Let's see. Any questions at this point? Let's see. Nothing coming in yet. Maybe give them another minute to let all this sink sure, in. Sure, I can. Uh, I can go over that uh, that cosmetic weld. It really is, let's see, where do we want to do a cosmetic weld? How about we'll come here and I'll just delete that one and then we'll just redo it. That's the fillet weld. Where are you at? There we go, right there. So I'm going to come into that those beads there, and we'll uh, we'll delete that. So there's really not a whole lot to the cosmetic weld. Um, its its purpose is just an indication in the um, in the um, model itself that there's a weld here. So whether you select just a single edge, um, if you've got nice fillets and on your uh, on your model um, you could do a chain where it would just automatically select all of those or what I did was the uh, was the loop so I just held over this edge here and it's gra grabbing the wrong loop by default but I just give that a minute for the uh, the select other tool to pop up and I'll select loop um, this area here is if there's a cross section to this weld, um, it's gonna have its own physical properties. So I would fill that in to give that size. <laughs> and then if I get into an analysis or if I need to pull that information, the, the material or the mass information um, on my drawing, then I have that ability there. And then obviously, like I said, we would come in and create a weld symbol here, the type of weld that we want um, whether it be plug weld, slot welds, we've got, um, you know, corner flange, scarf welds. A lot of this, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm, I'm not a welder. So a lot of these, you know, I, I try and stay away from, give them the, uh, the proper weld and, um, or give them a, a symbol of, of welding and let them determine what, uh, what needs to happen here. So um, if we wanted to add in stature size, we could certainly do that here. Um, anything that uh, that we need, we can just type in those values. So if I wanted to add something like 12.7, just a simple fillet weld here. Um, again, adding in the uh, the contour convex, whatever we prefer, we can uh, we can apply that there. Does that answer your question? Let's see here. Yeah, so a few more questions came in. Does look um, like that, yeah. So Natalie has another question. I don't understand the area part or how the cosmetic weld show or have how the cosmetic shows. Whoops, my thing's moving here. Uh, how uh, how the cosmetic shows where the weld will actually be. And if I... The uh, and I'm hoping that you're seeing it on my screen. There's a little. Um a little short line right here um, or bold line that indicates this is a cosmetic weld. Let me do this. Let's go to our view tab and maybe turn off those uh, those work planes. That might give a little bit clearer. Instead of the model view here, um, we see just this bold line indicating, hey, there's a, a weld at this point. As far as the area is concerned, 
let's go ahead and edit this uh, this feature here. Um, what this would be um, is strictly for mass calculations for finite element analysis. If we need to add a, an area that this weld would take up, we don't want to show the actual weld feature. We just want to provide the information. That would be the purpose of the uh, the area here, um, telling us what is the cross section essentially of that weld, and then from that the the mass tools or the finite element analysis tools they can calculate um, what this would would actually fill what the volume would be in this uh, in this object here. Let's see what else do we have. So, uh, Natalie, did I answer your question? So. A few from the cosmetic weld. Is there a way to change the bomb type from inseparable when creating the initial weld model? Um, I didn't understand what you meant by calculating the area. Okay. Uh, let's see. So on the cosmetic, I think that's what you just went over. Right, right. Um, so you can, if we take this, uh, let's see here, we'll finish that edit. We can change our bomb structure. And I believe that would be, let's go ahead and put this assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and save this just a minute. And we'll start a new assembly. And I'm just gonna put it in as standard. And then I'm gonna put this guy in there. So I'm just gonna do a simple copy, go to my new assembly and uh, paste that in here. So we see that if we look at that bill of material, obviously this is, uh, this is just a subcomponent. Um, Interestingly enough, we see this this weldment as um, as that setup, but this is where we would change our bill of material, um, our our bomb structure, if you will. Um, we do have that uh, that option there. If we take and convert, um, let's say that we take this assembly and we go to our environments tab and we convert this over. Um, once an assembly is converted to a weldment, it cannot be converted back. The bomb structure will be set to inseparable. Edit the bomb if you want a different structure. So uh, once again, we can we bring that up. It actually brings over this little box to determine our weld material, and there's that bomb structure. So again, we can set that to something besides inseparable. I hope that answers your uh, your question. Let's see here. Um, Les said, what happens when you change the weld in the drawing? Will it automatically adjust in the model? And that is a no, uh, Les, it will not. When we're in the, uh, when we're in the drawing side, um, I don't know if you saw that earlier. Let's see here. If I go to, uh, to change this symbol, um, it only allows me to change the uh, the weld symbol style. I don't have the ability to, to edit the weld symbol itself. Um, if I want to actually change that, I've got to come back to the weld and then find the particular bead that I want to change. In this case, it's that one. Um, we can edit the welding symbol here. I can actually come in, expand my beads and find the proper one, edit that feature and now make whatever changes I want to. Um, so it kind of depends on if do you want to edit the symbol or do you want to edit, edit the actual model um, either way. And let's see, when we're doing these, um, John, Jeff asked to show the, um, the strength calculations again. So we'll edit our, um, our weld node here. And 
as I'm doing this, I've already created um, my weld. So I'm, my weld calculator is actually gone. Um, let's see if it's going to let me, as I edit beads, let's do this guy right here. Edit the feature. Yeah, see that's that's already on. So you, when you do the initial setup, when you start a brand new um, weldment or you convert to a um, to a new weldment, um, that's when you have access to that weld calculator, and you can calculate your fillet welds, your your um, spatial planal. Um, as well as plug or groove welds, butt welds, spot welds, you see the different options through that. So um, you have access to all of those tools. All right. Let's see. Weld information. So you have to add the weld information in later on the drawing with the weld symbol. You don't have to, you can do it in the model, um, but you're not required in the model. Um, that was that was a question from, from Natalie, adding the, uh, the weld information. Um, if you add it from the model, then it's going to pull from the, uh, the weld bead as you create it. If you add it from the drawing, then you're gonna fill that information out yourself. Um, Uh, let's see. And Randall, I see. Let's see. If you insert a a uh, plain end scheduled pipe into the weldment and then apply preparations. Once I add constraints to attach my to my part, my preparations do not move with the pipe. Um, I believe that is true. I didn't uh, didn't show that. What you want to do is constrain your components prior to adding your preparations. Um, just to make sure that they uh, that they don't get um, get um, missed like you've seen there. And Natalie had asked, "What? Um, how do you know what the area is?" That is that is by your determination. When you're doing those cosmetic welds, you get to determine um, how big do I want this weld to be. So. You can do, and, and basically you're doing, you know, essentially a triangle, um, or if you've got whatever shape it is that you're you're welding to, um, you you would figure that out. Um, you would figure out the area yourself, and then um, put that value in. Again, it's a it's a a custom value, if you will, um, that's used for other calculations. Um, Let's see, Nick says, I have a question about the bottom weld on the T shape. The inside bottom edge of that T goes through the center plate um, standing. Is there a way to make the weld only on the portion of that edge? Oh, let's see here. So, You're saying if the inside were to duck down, I, I assume that's what you're saying. If it were to go into a pocket here, can you create just on these two surfaces? And by by your surface selection, it would do that. I hope that's um, that answers your question. Um, let's see. And I hope that I showed you just through the uh, the standard assembly using that convert tool um, environments tab convert um, that's how you uh, you convert that guy um, let's see I've noticed that uh, I noticed on an IDW when I drop the parts list in and reorder it I no longer have the ability to override the list in the model. Do you know why that is? So, um, 
let's see here. So on our drawing, when we place in a parts list, and we'll select this guy right here. Is it not going to let me select that guy? Might want me to update first. Error in the view. Oh, I don't think there's an error in the view. Update. No. I'm not sure why there's an error in my view. Let's do this. Save. Interesting. Something I've done wrong. So it's not digging my my parts list creation here. Um, let's go ahead and just select our weldment assembly. And okay. Yep. There's something wrong that I've something in the edits that I've done that caused it some issues here. Um, you should be able to to edit your parts list. And if you uh, if you change the item numbers, um, it should reorder those. It will not reorder components in in the assembly view here in the um, in the view here. Now I think I know why. There we go. It was in the weld view. So, edit my parts list. You should have the ability to um, to bring those in. Um, let's see. There are there's one part one and two T brackets. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I would say. Although that seems odd, four T by that makes sense. So that's why there's there's four different components here. Um, those are all the same. All right, Mitch is left. Um, and then adding machining the top flat. Let's see here. Hugo, can you show adding a deep weld and then machining the top flat? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Hugo. Um, that one you might want to bring into our support group and, and um, see if we can see if we can do something through a support case to answer that one. Uh, let's see. So you have to place your parts, position, constrain, then do preparations. That's correct, Randall. And Get a lightning bolt next to the parts list. Typically, um, typically when that happens, Natalie, that it just wants an update. Sometimes when you when you edit the parts list itself or edit the view, um, it will update that. Sometimes it requires you to uh, open the assembly and do the update, and it should clear that. Again, if you're having trouble clearing it, that's definitely a good one for uh, for the support group. Uh, give them a call and let us see that happen. Um, and Michael, how do you set up cost for well? It would be really cool to set up some basic cost structure. Um, that one is probably a little bit different. I don't think, let's see here. Let's go in here. See, because when I select this, if I were to go to I properties, um, obviously we have a, uh, a cost estimate here. Um, in I properties, but it's got all the welds. Now, if I select individuals, 
yeah, I don't have access to I property. So um, that would be probably a custom field that you would have to enter. Um, if you're wanting to do, you know, a um, for all welds um, and you can figure out time operations, material operations, whatever, you could do that. Uh, let's see here. And Natalie, I'm not sure what you mean by bolt. I see that uh, that up here. Um, hopefully, I've answered uh, questions as, as uh, uh, to the best of my ability, anyway. To uh, hopefully to to your satisfaction. Um, certainly, feel free to uh, to send those into uh, any other questions into. Um, as a reply back to the email that you get with the uh, with the recording, um, or like I said, if you uh, if you have a support contract with Hagerman, um, these are all great questions to bring to uh, to the support team, and we'll we'll be glad to help you out. Anything else? These were great questions. There was a lot of them. All right, guys. Ashley, I think that's all. I'm not seeing any more questions come in. Okay. Well, thank you, Kevin. Uh, this will conclude our broadcast. If you do think of additional questions today, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email that you received from GoToWebinar, and we can get those to Kevin or your sales rep. Um, or whoever to get your questions answered. Once again, if you could take a few moments to answer the short survey, we would appreciate it. It will just pop up as we close down the session today. And thanks for attending. Have a great day, everybody.